Hi, this is Colin Rennie here, and welcome to another video on a series of introductions to Rhino. And in this video, we're going to be covering a, uh, an introduction to how to orient and to lay out parts um, that you have constructed in three dimensional space um, in order to prepare them for cutting. In, in our case, in this module, we're going to be working with the water jet cutter. Uh, but it might be a laser cutter or a CNC cutter or any kind, any other kind of uh, CNC based machinery. Uh, the same principles apply pretty much. So the first thing we're going to do is show you how to do this kind of manually from from the from the ground up really, and uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll show you some of the automated processes that Rhino has embedded into it. Um, there are also some more sophisticated and um, difficult techniques that can be used using plugins like Grasshopper but for now we're just going to start with the basics and I'm going to show you how to lay these objects out so we need to start with some geometry so I'll just I'm going to show you some some simple stuff to start with so I'll um, make a, uh, a box and I'll make it four millimeters because we're working with four millimeter glass I'll make it four millimeters high and then say for example I'm also making another box which is going to be in the other orientation, which is going to slot between these two things. We're going to make that four millimeters thick. And say these have some kind of intersection, and I, I want to lay one part out for the other. So I need to find the intersection between these two. Uh, I'm going to do a Boolean difference between the two of them. But before I do that, I'll choose one then the other. So let there we go. So I've created a slot in one. That's fine. Let's just say that's what we're working with at the moment. So I want to orient this. So uh, I'm also going to move this around a little bit in a few different planes. So let's say for the sake of argument we have something like that to work with. Um, and that's what we're trying to, to cut out. now. I've made that in uh, on the XY plane and the XZ plane to start with, but then I've moved it around. But that, that's to simulate what might happen when you're trying to make an object in three-dimensional space. Um, but we need to move these into their planes. Now, let's do that manually to start with. So the first thing we're going to do is move this one here. Um, and the, what I'm going to do is to start by moving it and rotating it using the rotate tool. Uh, and I'm going to think, right, I need to rotate this uh, to get it flat. And that's going to take a number of rotations in order to get this object flat. I'm going to need to rotate it in this plane, for example. I could rotate that until it's vertical, holding my shift key. And then I could rotate it in this plane, which is the, the XZ, the X, sorry, the ZY plane. And then I could rotate it in the top view, which is the XY plane, and then I can rotate it again in the right view. You can see this is quite a cumbersome process, but now I have the object flat. Um, and that took a number of rotations, probably more than actually was needed, I probably added an extra step in there. But the point is that it takes a number of rotations in order to, to move this object into a flat orientation. And it's also not on the construction plane, it's not flat, which is not what we're going to want when we're, uh, when we're cutting out. We don't want objects floating around in space, we want them absolutely flat on the construction plane. Um, and I did, I did that move, if I undo that a few times, I did that move by rotating and then choosing endpoints and near points. And it was quite, I was quite um, careful in the way I picked them. So, for example, I picked the end point of the corner here and then a near point along a line that's on the same surface as that corner point. Not a point over here on the other line, a point on the same surface. I click that, then I hold my shift key down. When I hold my shift key down, it will toggle to ortho. I then click again and that will... Uh, flip that piece into a straight line. So this line here is on the Z axis, okay? So that is now definitely on the Z axis, but it's not on the Z axis here, so I'm gonna do, sorry, on the, on the, that's on the what X axis rather. I need to move this line here onto the X axis, or the Z axis rather. Again, holding my shift key down to toggle ortho, and that will now move that vertically, but you can see 
the object in this view, in the right view, is now sitting at a funny angle. I want to move that down to flat. So again, another move, rotate, end, near, mid, usually, usually near is better. And then holding my shift key down, I can rotate that so it becomes flat and oriented with the construction plane, with the C plane. Okay. Um, and that will give me um, at least something to start with. Now this, this object I'd need to do in the same way. But you can see that takes rather a long time to, uh, to move these objects into place. Um, there is a couple of other ways of doing that. And um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to undo again. Uh, you can orient these objects using reference points and target points. So uh, what I'm going to do first is to create a surface. So I'll make a surface, but I'm going to do this on the uh, the XY plane. And I'm going to orient this object onto this surface. Now it has two benefits to doing this. Firstly, the object that I'm orienting it to, this surface here, is stuck to the XY plane, which is what we need when we're cutting things out. When we export things using a, a export DWG or DXF, it needs to be on the XY plane. It needs to have a, a Z height of zero, otherwise the drawing won't work particularly well when you export it into, into CAD software. It needs to all be completely flat if you're going to cut it on a, on a flat um, plotting uh, type of software. So that has one benefit. That, that plane is on the XY plane, so that surface is on the XY plane, so if we orient this it will be stuck to that surface and we will, we will ensure that there's no Z height. Uh, so I can orient this object to this, um, and we use that. It's a transform, and it's orient. Okay, and I'm going to choose. If you choose two points, you don't get enough control over all three um, axes uh, because these are these are that object has been moved in three planes: the x, y, the x, z, and the z, y. So we need to be able to orient that in three directions, which means we need to use orient three points. So transform, orient, three points, and it says select objects to orient. Well, this is this guy with the slot in it. I'm going to choose that object there. Reference point one. Well, the reference point one is usually what will be the zero um, point, so the origin point. So I'm going to choose this point here. I'm going to choose the second reference point. I'm going to choose the end up here. I'll do this in perspective so you guys can see it a little bit better. I'm going to choose the end point up here. And then the third reference point, I'm going to choose, well, we can choose the end point up here. You need to be careful when you do this, though, though, to make sure when you're picking points that you're picking those points on the same surface. If you pick them on a different surface, then your orient will not be accurate. It will be skewed. Uh, you need to pick them on the same surface. So there's my end at that point there. And then it says target point one. The target point one I'm going to choose is this point here. Target point two, this point here. Target point three, this point here. And you can see that now orients that surface straight onto there. It actually moves the whole object. You can in the orient, so this is copy equals no, you can in the orient change that uh, toggle to copy equals yes, which means it will just make a copy there for you. Um, so we'll try that this time again. I'll do that one more time to show you again. So I'm going to right click to repeat the command. Reference point one, well that's the origin, so that's this point here. Reference point two, that's this point here, which is the, this corner up here. It could be the other one, doesn't really matter. It will change the way that it lays it out on the surface. Uh, third point here, the most important thing to remember when you do this though is that you're picking on one surface. And then target point one is the origin again, is the origin again. Uh, then target point two, I'm going to choose this end point up here. Target point three, I'm going to choose this corner over here. And you can see it does that. Okay, I didn't copy again. Never mind. But you see the the, the way that it works. Okay, so that, however, does take quite a while to do, and there are quicker ways of um, achieving the results that you need. And the best way to do it is to use an inbuilt function in Rhino called the Unroll Surface tool. An Unroll Surface basically will flatten any surface directly onto the C plane for you. 
it will do the Orient for you and it will stick it straight to the seaplane. It does that automated um, function that we were going through there. It orients the, the, the parts, it decides where the plane is and then it will flatten that plane onto the XY plane so that you can, you can cut it out later. Um, and it's a function that's used an awful lot within manufacture in order to create surfaces that will uh, be developable and unrollable. So what we're going to do here is to flatten this surface here. That, that, that is not a surface, that's actually a poly surface. If it's a poly surface you can't unroll it. It's a number of surfaces joined together and those surfaces can't be um, unrolled independently. Uh, they, they need to be split up first. So we first need to explode this object. So I'm going to choose um, explode and that will explode that object into ten surfaces here. One of those surfaces, this surface here, or the other one in this case because the, uh, the slots are perpendicular, those two surfaces are pretty much identical um, but we only want to orient one of those or unroll one of those. So this one I can just type in unroll unroll surface. Select surfaces to unroll, that's the surface I want to unroll, and it basically just does that for you. The advantage of the unroll surface is that it's flat already, you don't need to do anything to it apart from find the edges of it before we cut it, and it also copies automatically by default. It copies the object, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't unroll it and, uh, and, and move the whole object. Unroll surface will actually work in a number of different ways as well. It doesn't work purely on planar surfaces. It can work on surfaces uh, that are twisted or um, curved as long as those surfaces are developable. In other words, as long as those surfaces have only one um, axis of curvature. If they have two axes of curvature, they won't be able to unroll. So in other words, you can't unroll a dome or a bulged object. You can only unroll um, an object as if it was imagine a piece of paper that's been bent or twisted that can unroll but an object that's domed or sort of elastic can't be unrolled um, successfully it won't do it um, so for example I can make a I can make a curve here on the construction plane and I can make a straight line from the end of that curve going straight up I'll use my um, control key to create actually I'll I'll do that in top view so I've got a, st a straight line going up there and I'm going to create a sweep across that surface across the rail here so I'm going to use sweep one rail select rail, that's my rail select cross section curve, that's my cross section curve press enter when done and I have a, a sweep surface there now that surface is what we call developable in other words that surface can be unrolled without causing Rhino any problems. As soon as we change that, rebuild it, move some control points, it won't be developable. Um, but I can I can show you how that works. We can unroll this surface, unroll surface, select the surface to unroll, press enter when done, and that is the surface that was this piece here. So in other words, if this was cut out of a flexible material, you could roll un you could roll it into that shape and it would have exactly the same length as this object here. So this, this length here is exactly the same as this length here. Okay. Once we have um, unrolled our objects, exploded them and unrolled them, you will also need to find their edges. Um, this is a surface, and a surface is not particularly useful when you send it to a CAD-CAM machine. What a CAD-CAM machine, what a, what a computer-rated manufacturer machine needs is uh, basically a, um, a trace or an outline and there's a number of ways you can get that you can do duplicate edge so uh, this is an object I want to find a surf I want to find a, a, a curve from it so I can get curve curve from objects duplicate edge and choose this object here or just choose all of those edges but not that one enter and now I have a line here and I can join that and just check eight curves joined into one closed curve. Closed is important. Is if the if the curve is not closed, then you have a hole somewhere, and a hole will not be uh, liked by um, a water jet machine or a laser cutter. It will cause some problems later on, unless you actually want um, some kind of bridging 
in there, in which case it would be cut as a line. But we want parts, we want individual parts which must be closed, otherwise the, the, the cut will not continue all the way around and your object will be stuck to the material that it was cut from. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. There's another way of doing it which is to I'll just um, to undo that again. Delete that. Uh, there's silhouette, uh, which is a silhouette. Select surface to silhouette, that's this object here. That will do exactly the same thing, pretty much. But it works on more complicated objects, um, and uh, it, can, it can also work on objects from different uh, angles and viewports. You need to be careful when you're doing it not to not to create a silhouette in perspective because you will you'll create a, a silhouette in different different angles. But that will work. Make sure when you do it that you join the curves as well. When you join the curves together, they'll form. It's a little bit like grouping them. They'll form one um, closed poly curve or poly line. Uh, okay, so that's what we need to do, and that's the um, the, the technique that we need to use. So unroll, develop surface. Uh, or unroll surface. Um, so in order to do that you need to explode your poly surfaces into individual surfaces, choose one face or the other face, unroll that, find the edges of that surface and create a closed poly line such as that. Okay, I hope you uh, will learn something from that and I will uh, see you guys in class next week. Take care. Bye for now.